Hello, this is Dr. Grant Cooper at Princeton Spine and Joint Center. In today's video, I would like to address when you should get imaging studies for lower back pain and sciatica, and which imaging study is the best to get. So for example, should you get an x-ray, an MRI, a CAT scan, ultrasound, etc. First, I need to pause to remind you to please like this video and please subscribe to our channel to help us continue to grow and hopefully to reach and help more people. Okay, let's talk about imaging studies and lower back pain and sciatica. Now, as we do this, there are going to be two basic categories to consider here. Let's get the more serious one out of the way first. If you have weakness or progressive neurologic symptoms, then you're going to want to get an imaging study right away. And that imaging study is going to be an MRI. So for example, if you have lower back and radiating leg pain and you also find yourself tripping over your foot, then we need an imaging study to look at the underlying anatomy because something is clearly pressing on a nerve in a serious way. Similarly, if you have rapidly worsening numbness and so for example, you can't feel your big toe one day and the next day you can't feel your whole lower leg, this is a clear progressive neurologic symptom and we would want an imaging study right away to evaluate that. If you just have numbness and tingling and that numbness and tingling is not getting worse, then this becomes a judgment call. You probably don't need an imaging study right away, but it's going to depend on how you look clin clinically and how you present on your physical examination. Also, if you feel numbness in your leg, but when the doctor touches your leg, you feel that, then this is less serious than if you don't feel the part of your leg when the doctor is touching it. The best imaging study to evaluate you in the, above, in the above scenarios is going to be an MRI. MRI will show the soft tissue and the nerves the best. An X-ray can show you the bone and air, but it really won't be particularly helpful in most cases. Now, if on the MRI you find something called a spondylolisthesis, then there's another consideration. The spondylolisthesis is a big word to describe the situation where the bones have shifted on top of one another. If this has happened, then you'll likely need to also get x-ray views where you get x-rays in flexion where you're bending forward and x-ray when you're in extension and bending backwards. These flexion and extension x-rays are obtained in order to see if there's any instability in the back. That is, if the bones are shifting on top of one another as you bend forwards and backwards. But basically, an MRI is going to be your imaging of choice and the only imaging choice you probably need to get. Now, the other category, and the category that's by far the most common, is a person that presents with back pain, uh, or back pain and radiating leg pain, or just radiating leg pain, also known as you know, sciatica. In these instances, many doctors do initially obtain x-rays of the spine. The reason to do this, if you're going to do this, is to get an overall sense of the bones. X-rays, after all, just show bone and air. If there's a spondylolisthesis, like we discussed, um, then you can see that on an x-ray. You can also rule out certain types of fractures in the lumbar spine on x-rays. The reason that I'm not a fan of getting x-rays in this situation is that it's not going to change the treatment course for the patient. Now, one exception for this general rule is if you're suspecting an autoimmune condition such as ankylosing spondylitis, then you're going to want to get x-rays of the sacroiliac joint as this is the primary way of evaluating for ankylosing spondylitis. But this has a very uh, specific set of clinical symptoms and ankylosing spondylitis is not really what we're discussing here. Uh, we will cover that topic in a separate video because it's a very important topic. Now, the reason other doctors may give for wanting to get the x-ray on initial presentation is because it's inexpensive, it's easy to get, and it does offer at least some clinical information or some information to help fill out the whole clinical picture. For me, this minimal information does not offset the radiation, even though it's just a little bit of radiation, there's still some radiation from the x-ray. Now, there are a variety of potential causes for back pain and radiating leg pain, but all of them are generally treated initially with conservative treatment, which consists primarily of therapeutic exercises. If the symptoms persist despite the therapeutic exercises, then the patient might need an injection. There are a variety of spinal injections that you might be considering depending on the symptoms. But no matter what the spinal injection is, from a diagnostic medial branch block of the facet joint, to an epidural, to a sacroiliac joint injection, 
before doing any of those injections, you would want an imaging study. And that imaging study, again, is going to be an MRI of the lumbosacral spine. Now, some insurance companies require obtaining an x-ray before they'll authorize paying for an MRI of the spine these days. If that seems confusing to you, then that's good because really it is confusing. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense because no matter what you see on the x-ray, you're still going to end up getting the MRI and the MRI is going to tell you everything an x-ray will and also a whole lot more. So it would seem unnecessary to get the x-ray first from every clinical perspective. However, having complained about this to at least one chief medical officer at an insurance company, I've learned that it doesn't have to make sense for it to be the official policy. Uh, so at the end of the day, if you want the insurance company to pay for the MRI of the lumbosacral spine, you may have to get an x-ray of the lumbar spine first. But the MRI is clinically what you're going to want to get. If you can't have an MRI because you have a pacemaker or for any other reason, uh, for example, I had a patient who had shrapnel in their spine from a bullet uh, from World War II, then the next best imaging study would be a CAT scan. A CAT scan gives you a very good picture of the spine and the nerves. Um, it's not quite as good as the MRI for the soft tissue, uh, but of course a CAT scan also has a lot of radiation, whereas the MRI has no radiation. Still, if an MRI cannot be obtained, then a CAT scan is going to be the next best option. Okay, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've learned something. Uh, if you have enjoyed it, please remember to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up and please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or comments for me, you can reach me at drcooper at princetonsjc.com or feel free to leave a question or a comment for me in the comment section. Thank you very much. I will see you in the next video.